G'day everyone. The plant we're looking at right here is called Clematis, very often called Virgin's Bower. So the Virgin's Bower grows as a very aggressively growing vine. This plant is uh, trifoliate, meaning that the leaves grows in uh, groups of three leaflets here. The leaves themselves are growing opposite off the vine into these compound trifoliate leaf clusters. There's the main vine stem right there where they're uh, spreading off into opposite arrangements. So when I first encountered this vine it really had me fooled because I actually thought it was a poison ivy vine when I first saw it and that's what I ruled it off as. So uh, later on in the spring when this plant started to flower I realized very quickly it wasn't poison ivy at all, it was something else, and after more research I found that it was virgin's bower, the clematis. This uh, leaf is almost a cross between poison ivy and toothwort, that's how it looks. But this plant isn't related to either family of toothwort or poison ivy at all, not even distantly. This is a member of the buttercup family. And what we're looking at right here is its flower pods. This is the fruit after the flower has disappeared off of this plant. Right now it's early September. Right here, these fruits right here in bundles, this is where the flowers were earlier in the season. Those are its seed pods. And those tendril looking things you can see right here in the winter time will become a white fluff much like you'd see on a milkweed when the fluff all poofs out of its seed pod and uh, this is a pretty useful part of this plant because you can use it as a fire starter it's very flammable in fact this persists throughout the winter time so if you can uncover this you'll usually see the uh, seed pods there and you can use that fluff as a fire starter in fact, you can throw a match on this and set the whole plant ablaze. Right now it hasn't developed that far. You can faintly see where it's starting to feather off. It'll mature and dry out. And then this will enable the plant to reproduce, as this will help carry the seeds elsewhere to reproduce. There's no edible or medicinal use for this plant that's worth noting. It's a member of the buttercup family and it is poisonous. It can be extremely aggressive growing in nature, it tends not to spread beyond where it's planted if it's controlled, but it can be invasive. And if you plant it along uh, intolerant species, it can choke out and kill the plants. As you can see, this vine can get quite long, but it's very low lying unless it can grow up a host. It'll grow laterally along the ground. So what I'm looking at right here is a very good example of a very large and mature leaf with its three leaflets. So one of the reasons this plant is a member of the buttercup family is its name Ranunculus has a distinction with frog's feet. Meaning that the leaves are often described as looking like frog's feet. Which I can see the resemblance here, but it's not the first thing that came to mind when I spotted this plant. It looks very much like a member of the mint family, like a motherwort leaf or a nettle. The axis in which the leaves spread off are almost exactly opposite from each other, with the middle stem shooting straight up 90 degrees to the terminal leaflet, meaning the end leaflet here. It's almost like a cross right in the center of that leaf axis there. The leaves are very coarsely serrated and deeply lobed, putting three uh, points here and then further into smaller coarse teeth along it and like a maple leaf almost right at the tip of the middle lobe again it's serrated here. The veins of these leaves are coming right out of the middle of the bottom of the leaf where it meets the stem so the top of these leaves are a nice dark shimmering green changing hues with the light and then underneath a duller whitish green. So here's a good portion of this vine, what I could get of it anyways. It's quite long 
And you can see toward the end where the growth stops is where the uh, flowers and the fruits are going to be. The vine itself has a green appearance on the underside of it. And when we flip it over here, we can see a reddish brown tinge. So it's a bicolored vine. Very fine, minute fluff on the vine. You can feel it and rub it off with your fingers. The vine also has some ridging to it. It's not completely round. Right down here, you can see a part of the root of this vine. The root is very, very strongly embedded into the ground and without a shovel it would be very difficult to dig out. So like almost every single member of the buttercup family, the virgin's bower contains the poisonous glycoside ranunculin, which not only will affect your heart if ingested, but on contact or ingestion, becomes a very, very powerful blistering agent, which can cause blisters, burning, and some very nasty sensations on the skin. Aside from fire starters, cordage, and garden plants, this is where the usefulness of any member of the buttercup family ends in my honest, humble opinion. So this very, very tall flowering plant standing right here has the growing characteristics of a member of the carrot family. However, this is not a member of the carrot family. This is called tall meadow rue. It's a member of the buttercup family. This plant often can be seen growing over two and a half meters tall. It's a very tall growing wetland plant. It likes wet, rich soil, and for those reasons you'll usually find it at lake sides, growing in swamps or ditches where there's a lot of standing water, in marshes or bogs. So again, being a member of the buttercup family, and having done intensive research on this plant and finding next to no information available on it whatsoever, this offers literally no medicinal or edible value to a survivalist or a forager. I should stress, as I have probably before, the buttercup family contains some of the most lethal plants out there and almost every single member of it is either violently poisonous or deadly poisonous. So, beyond your garden plant, that's where the use of this plant here stops. I deem it poisonous until proven otherwise. So without further ado, tall meadow rue. So freeze of filming, I've pulled this plant out of the ground, so you can see it alongside a backdrop. This plant notably stays in bloom a very long time. It blooms mid-spring, it grows rapidly, and can stay in bloom for months on end. Right now it's early September and the flowers have finally dropped off of this plant revealing its seed pods where it'll disperse to reproduce into new plants. This is a tall flowering perennial. The smooth hairless pink molted stem it's streaked and spotted at the same time giving it a very distinctive look. It's got some ridging to it but the overall shape of the stem is round, hairless. You can see here where the main leaves branch alternately off the stem all the way down the main plant, which is a growing characteristic of the carrot family. And then you can follow along to its compound leaves where it divides two, three, and sometimes four times into its leaflets. When these plants are very small, they look strikingly like blue cohosh. But blue cohosh rarely gets over two and a half feet tall. It's a very stout shrub. And meadow rue is much lighter and greener in appearance. Blue cohosh is darker, very purplish, reddish, much different color, much darker blue purple color than meadow rue. And meadow rue will rapidly outgrow blue cohosh. So these leaflets are lobed three times. The terminal ones generally are the most developed. There's three lobes there. Pale light green on top, underside, pale whitish green. Right on the main stem here, you can see a sheath that enwraps many branchings to on this plant, 
three separate leaflets and then up the middle here a totally different stem forming new compound leaves. The flowers of these plants are uh, usually white to a cream color, rarely purple. And when the flowers drop off later in the year, they form these seed pods. You can see here in my hand. Right here, even up near the flower, you can see where it branches off alternately on the stem, as earlier pointed out. And there's three distinctly separate compound leaves and then another branch right up the center going to a completely new flowering system. That yellow pungent oil is ranunculin, which is in almost all species of the buttercup. It is a very poisonous and very effective blistering agent. The root of this plant is a very fibrous tap root, much like as seen on the Secuta species, uh, water hemlock. So tall meadow rue, a very nice plant to look at but leave it at that.